In this lesson, we're going to look at the least common multiple of a set of numbers. Um, and so to kind of gain an intuition for what the least common multiple of a set of numbers means, let's take a look at this example. It asks us to list the first eight multiples of 9 and the first six multiples of 12. So um, when I say list multiples, what I mean is just first take 1 times 9, which is 9, 2 times 9 is 18, 3 times 9 is 27, 4 times 9 is 36, 5 times 9 is 45, 6 times 9 is 54, 7 times 9 is 63, and 8 times 9 is 72. So there's the first 8 multiples of 9. Let's do the same thing for 12. Um, 1 times 12 is 12. 2 times 12 hopefully we know is 24, just by our knowledge of hour, how many hours there are in a day. Um, beyond that you can start um, doing long multiplication, or you could just keep adding 12 each time, right? Because multiplication is just repeated addition. Either way you get at it, we'll make our list here. So we've got 36, then 48. 12 times 5 is 60. And finally, 12 times 6 was the last one they needed us to do here is 72. So now let's take a look at these two lists. Um, we have some commonalities here. So the first number I noticed that the two lists share is 36. But then they also share 72. So since both of these lists are multiples of 9 and 12, uh, respectively, um, one thing we could say about these numbers we've circled is that 36 and 72 are common multiples. of 9 and 12. Okay. Of course, 36 is the smallest of these multiples, so we would say that 36 is the least or smallest common multiple. of 9 and 12. So that's really what we're getting at here. So the definition that I've given below here is that the least common multiple of a set of numbers is the smallest number that each number in the set divides into evenly. So the fact that 36 is a multiple of both numbers means that 9 divides into 36 evenly, 12 divides into 36 evenly. So I'm going to present a few different strategies for um, finding the least common multiple of, uh, and in this video we'll just focus on two numbers. First of all, if you just recognize what the least common multiple is, that's fine. You don't have to really show me necessarily any work here. So looking at two numbers like 4 and 6, you might automatically just say to yourself, oh, well, 12 is the smallest number that both 4 and 6 divide into evenly. And if you recognize that right off the bat, fantastic. If not, what your strategy should be, um, or one of what one of your strategies can be, is to kind of do what we did um, in that first example. But you don't necessarily need to make um, two different lists. What I would suggest is start by just making a list uh, with the larger number. So for our purposes here, We'll start with 1 times 6. Now, of course, this is a multiple of 6, so then you just ask yourself the question, um, does 4 go into 6 evenly? And, of course, the answer is no. So then what you do is you try the next multiple of 6. So does 4 go into 12 evenly? Well, the answer is yes. So since 4 goes into 12 evenly, and automatically 6 goes into 12 evenly, there's your answer. And then yet one more way to do this, which at first might seem more complicated, but the larger your numbers get, probably the more you'll want to use this last method, is you can prime factor each number. Okay, so prime factor each number. 
And so what we, what we have here for 4 is 2 times 2, and then 6 becomes 2 times 3. And then the way we use this prime factorization is the LCM, let me use a different color here, the least common multiple, is the product of all prime factors raised to the highest number of times that factor appears in a number. Okay, so it, the LCM is the product of all prime factors raised to the highest number of times that factor appears in a number. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that I'm going to look at the two numbers I'm considering. I need a 2 and I need a 3. But according to this rule it says raise each one of these prime numbers to the highest number of times that factor appears in in a number. And so 2 appears twice in 4 and once in 6. And so I'm going to need two twos or 2 squared since 2 appears twice in this number. Now 3 appears 0 times in this number, 1 time in this number, so I'm only going to need 1 3 because um, that's the most number of times it shows up. And then you actually multiply this out. 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. Now, um, it's fully understandable if at this point you say, oh my goodness, why in the world would I ever do this process here when I could have just made a list? And for the numbers 4 and 6, I completely agree. Just make this list and you'll quickly get at the answer. Um, but the larger your numbers are, the more likely it is you'll want to use this process. And, and I promise you'll get used to it. So let's take a look at 18 and 30. All right, so, so you could make a list here. Um, and, uh, and, and that's fine, but I think what I want to do is practice this last, um, this last strategy. So I'm going to prime factor each of these because trust me the list isn't going to be easy on this one it's going to go on for a little while so we'll prime factor each number so 18 you, know, you might break down as 2 and 9 and then 9 breaks down as 3 and 3 30 maybe 5 and 6 and 6 is 2 and 3 so what we look at here is our LCM is going to need 2, 3, and 5. So those are the different prime numbers that show up. 2 appears once in 18 and once in 30. And so since it just appears once in each number, all we need is 1. And so uh, understand what we're doing here. We're trying to make sure that both 18 and 30 fit into this number. So if 18 has a single 2 and 30 has a single 2, it's going to be sufficient for our least common multiple to just have one, two, in order for this number to fit in, and then for this number to fit in. Let's move to the threes. Uh, so we have two threes in 18 and only one three in 30, but I'm going to need two. Right? Again, here's why. The one three from 30 would fit into just a single three in the least common multiple, but the two threes that are in 18 are going to need two threes in the least common multiple for 18 to divide into the LCM evenly. And then finally there are zero fives in this number, one five in this number, and so we just need one single five. And so then we just do the math here. This is two times nine times five. 
which is 2 times 45, 9 times 5 is 45, and then we get 90. Okay. Making our list um, wouldn't have taken too long, I suppose, because you'd have 30, 18 doesn't go into 30, 18 doesn't go into 60. It turns out that 18 does go into 90, but here's what makes this process a little more difficult. We don't really usually have memorized our multiples of 18, and so we would have had to do long division to check to see if 18 goes into 60, and we, got, we would have had to do long division to check to see if 18 goes into 90. So I think in this particular instance, the prime factoring method is a little bit better. Let's do one more. We have 42 and 140. So 42 would break down as 6 times 7. 6 is 2 times 3. 140, well, it ends in a 0, so you know um, 10 is a factor, and that would be 10 times 14. 10 breaks down as 2 times 5. 14 breaks down as 2 times 7. So we have 2's involved. We have 3's involved. We have 5's involved, and we have 7's involved. So the only question is, do any of them need to be raised to powers? I have one single 2 and 42, but I have two 2's in 140. So that means I'm going to need two 2's in my least common multiple. One 3 here, zero 3's here, so 1 is sufficient. All right. Both numbers will fit in on account of 3's. 5, there's 0 here, there's 1 here, so I just need one 5. And then there's one 7 here and one 7 here, so I still only need one 7. Right? Because 42 will fit into this number, uh, because this 7 will fit into that 7, and then 140 will fit into this number, this 7 will fit into that 7. So notice we don't add the number of 7's that show up, we just take the highest number we see. And then we multiply all this out. This is 4 times 3 times 5 times 7, which is 12 times 35. And I'm kind of kind of ran out of space here, so sorry. 35 times 12, and what we end up with here is 420. So our LCM is 420.